I feel like you should not put whiskey on your face. I don't know. Ooh. This is going to be the next thing. Justin <laughs> Sullivan's. It's a super Irish thing, too. It's like, Justin Sullivan's <laughs> whiskey, whiskey face, mask. Mask. face mask. <laughs> face mask. Face mask? Face mask. Hey, bunnies. It's Brooke. And Justin. And we're in the Delish Test Kitchen. And if you can't tell from my nails, it's springtime, baby, which means it's time for festive, fluffy, soft Easter bread. If you've never heard of Easter bread before, don't be alarmed or shocked or intimidated. It's super easy. It's just braided brioche dough that gets decorated with dyed eggs and some nonpareil sprinkles and then baked until it's really deep and golden brown. It's super adorable. It's kind of like the perfect centerpiece for a pastel laden brunch like spread or table. And the best part is if you have any leftover bread, which you probably will, we have the best idea for how to use the leftovers. And we're not gonna make you throw out the eggs because that'd be really mean. Um, I think I would like to know, Justin, this is for Justin. Have you ever <laughs> braided before? Like anything? I braided twice. Mm, what'd you braid? Once hair, once um I forget, but there was something. Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. It was it was like those friendship bracelets or like the hemp bracelets ah. that everyone was doing in like 2003, 2004. All right. Well, for all the girlies out there and Justin that can't braid, don't fear because we're going to teach you how. It's a really simple three strand braid and it could not be easier. Actually, Justin's going to do the braiding. He just doesn't know it yet. I'm just a little bummed that I'm excluded from the girlies, that it's girlies and me. I'm sorry, girlies. Inclusive of me. All the girlies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> all right, Brooke. What's the first thing we deal with when we're making bread? Yeast. Cool. I have some lukewarm milk. I'm going to take that from you and I'm going to handle this part. This recipe calls for active dry yeast. The two most common yeast you're going to see in a baking recipe is either this or instant yeast. TLDR, the primary difference between instant yeast and active dry yeast is that active dry yeast, you must bloom it and activate it before you add it into the dough. And for instant yeast, you can just chuck it in there with your wet or dry ingredients. So in this little measuring cup, I have some lukewarm milk that's very important. We don't want it cold or too hot because that will mess with the activation process. So like tap warm is perfect. We're gonna mix in some sugar and we're just gonna sprinkle over our packet of yeast over top. Give it one like good mix and then don't touch it. You don't want it to be disturbed. You want to let that yeast do its thing. And just wait until we get like a little bit of foam action, get that activation. It should take about like eight to 10 minutes. Okay, we're getting a little bubbly action. I'm gonna let you do this because okay. I'm bad at baking and I'd rather you mess it up than me. I'm only marginally better than he is, but that's just enough to make some dough. So that's what we're gonna do next. So it's time to mix the dough, like I said, but first I wanted to show you guys what's happened to this yeast. First of all, it smells good, so I'm just gonna keep sniffing it this whole time. But look how foamy it's gotten. It's nice and fluffy and ready to be mixed into the dough. If your yeast doesn't foam up and get nice and puffy like this, that means it's dead. Either it's an old pack or the yeast was never alive to begin with. You should just start over. It's very early in the process to start over, so just chuck it and start again with a new pack. First thing we're going to do into the bowl, we're gonna put our dry ingredients, so that's the flour, the sugar, and the salt. Give that a quick stir to make sure they're all combined. Then we're gonna add our frothy milk and yeast mixture and a couple of eggs. I crack the eggs into the small bowl before I add them to my big bowl because if you're clumsy like me, sometimes when you're cracking your eggs, you get a bunch of shells in the bowl. And it's a lot easier to fish a shell out of here than it is to fish it out of here. Then we're gonna mix that for about five minutes just until it starts to come together like a real dough. And then we're going to crank it up and mix it for another 15 minutes and start adding in some butter. So she's struggling a little bit, but I still think a stand mixer is the best tool for the job. If you don't have a stand mixer, all is not lost. It's totally okay. You can mix this dough by hand, but fair warning, don't go to the gym that day. Don't go to the gym the day after because you will get all the workout you need from kneading this dough. I promise. Now that we've got everything mixed in and our soft dough formed, time to add our last ingredient, which is the butter. So we're gonna add a tablespoon of softened butter, one at a time. Okay. There's so much butter in this dough, y'all. <laughs> the whole stick of butter is in the dough. It's still pretty firm right now, so we wanna get it to the point that we get it nice and soft and stretchy and pulley. You done yet? I think so. This stand mixer is so incredibly hot. She mad. She mad. <laughs> She's mad. She's big mad. Aww. But we have dough, so. It looks gorgeous. Thank you. I really didn't do much 
I guess you didn't really either at the end of the day. It's really the it's really she did it. I all. did our big girl here did most of the work and we're so grateful to her. But that's like honestly kind of the great thing about print is that I think it can be a really intimidating thing. And if you have a stand mixer, it can do a lot of the work for you. It's a lot it's a lot less stressful than one might think. It is. If you're gonna make a lot of bread, I would say go ahead and invest in one. Or see if you can find someone to donate one to you or Also, kneading isn't that hard or scary. I do it a lot. And it's it's fine. And it builds up the muscles. The butter got all incorporated and everything's all kneaded and it's nice and soft now instead of that hard sort of like tacky dough that we had to start with. So this is ready to rise and to rise it, we're going to put it into a large bowl. Oh, look how pretty it is. Look how smooth. It should be rather pliable. It should feel like you can mess with it. Kind of play doughy. I give it like an extra knead just to make things like a little uniform pretty. Yeah, that way when it Pour rises, it it'll be a nice round ball instead of a weird lumpy ball, like the one that I just handed to him. And that'll make it easier for us to roll out and then ultimately shape and braid, which I'm so excited about. Are you excited for braiding? Yes. Okay, good. And how long is this gonna prove for? That's gonna prove for an hour and a half to give it some time to double in size and get nice and aerated and fermented and ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Plastic wrap, get it covered up. You could use a tea towel, but I feel like this, for some reason, I feel like my things proof better under a plastic wrap. And I never fully trust a tea towel because like, did I use that to wipe up something five minutes ago? I don't really Honestly, know. Honestly, very, very true. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not wiping anything with plastic wrap, so. It's time for the most fun part of this Easter bread, and that's dyeing the eggs. You can't have Easter anything without dyed eggs, so. Obviously, we're gonna dye eggs for our Easter bread. And we wanna keep them light, bright, pastel-y. All the Easter colors. So like anything close to my shirt or his shirt is kind of in the same ballpark of what you're going for, for these dyed eggs. Also, contrary to what people usually do, we're not cooking the eggs first. They're nope. gonna cook in the oven. And we've tested it. Sometimes people talk about eggs exploding in the oven. These won't, we promise. We've tested it a bunch. So know that this is totally safe. We're gonna take some precautions, but these are, we're gonna be dying raw eggs. We're gonna be dying raw eggs. Don't worry about whether or not the dye will take to a raw egg. It absolutely will. As long as the egg doesn't have any weird cracks or anything in it, it should be the exact same as dying a hard boiled egg. And honestly, the main reason for doing that is we didn't want the eggs to be not edible by the time they come out of the oven and they've been boiled and baked. That would be gross. Dying eggs is very easy. All you need is some boiling water, some vinegar, and food safe dye. You need edible dye, people. Don't go in and try to like use shoe polish or something weird to dye your eggs. Don't use clothing dye. Don't bust out the shaving cream because then your eggs won't be edible. Use vinegar and edible food dye. That's it. it. Just gave me a whole new fear. I didn't know that I had that people would be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to get your hands all messed up, get some gloves. These are great to have in the kitchen anyway. We have three steps. First, boiling water in the bowl, then vinegar in the bowl, then the combination of dyes of your choice. Get crazy, use whatever, actually don't get crazy because you don't <laughs> want to end up making brown. So keep it to Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, all that good stuff. But whatever color you pick, that's what you're gonna put in the bowls. Then you're gonna add in your eggs with the dye. Then they're gonna sit for about like 10 minutes, 10 right? 10 minutes, yep. I'm very excited to look at my first dyed eggs. <laughs> I wanna see how well you did, honestly. Can I do it? Yeah, you can do it. I don't think the blue and green ones are ready yet. Okay, I'm gonna so leave, leave those pink. alone. Just take the pink ones out. Oh my god. I'm so proud of you. It's like the perfect Easter pink, in my opinion. It matches my sweater, which is what we were going for, if you guys <gasps> didn't know. Be careful when you're removing these. Sorry, I made a voice as a noise as you were speaking. These are still raw at the end of the day, so don't break them because you'll ruin all your hard work. These are beautiful and I'm so excited. Okay, what I have to teach you guys now is how to get them to not explode in the oven. When you're working with a raw egg, all you want to do is help it release some pressure. Take a little push pin and make a tiny hole on the bottom of the egg. And with how eggs work, this isn't gonna cause like a little bit of egg to stream out of your like egg as you cook the bread. The like structure of the actual cells of the egg will keep it intact. So this is literally just to make it so that we're not building up pressure and cracking things open. Think about it like you would like baking a potato or putting a potato in the microwave, you pierce it with a fork first. It's like the same idea. 
And honestly, this is a lot easier than it seems. I know it looks like we were being really careful, which we are and you should be, but eggs are pretty sturdy. So don't be afraid to give the pin extra little push to make sure that it breaks past that shell. I almost don't want to bake this because of how beautiful it is. It also smells good. It's like, it's that continuation of that smell we spoke about earlier. Um, but unfortunately, in order to do what we came here to do, we are gonna have to bake it. And we're gonna have to punch, we're not only that, we're literally gonna have to punch this piece of dough. <laughs> we're gonna punch it. Well, that's exciting. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lightly flour our surface. And since this is a braided bread, we're gonna break it into three equal parts. We're gonna punch down our dough, make sure that that air, excess air is expelled. And then we're gonna divide our dough into three equal pieces. If you wanna be really crazy, like I sometimes am, I would use a scale, but you can also just eyeball it. Oh, I thought you were gonna say we're gonna do a four strand braid. I was like, are you getting crazy? No, okay. I mean, I love it, but no, okay. we're gonna, I, I don't even know how to do it, so I can't even do four. <laughs> then we're gonna take those three equal parts and roll them out using our hands, keeping everything nice and equal into one, like big long logs or strips. And you wanna go out from the center so that you know that everything's staying nice and even because you don't want like one really, really thick end and one skinny end. It will make your bread look really bad. Everything he just said is correct. I didn't need your validation, but I appreciate <laughs> it. When we're rolling out all the ropes, you wanna get them somewhere between 16 and 20 inches. It depends on how big you want your ultimate circle to be. Uh, 16 is a good place to start if you like a nice little tight Easter bread crown, but if you want something a little bit more grand, you can roll them a little bit longer and you'll get a slightly longer braid. We're gonna transfer these strands to a lined baking sheet. It's lined with parchment paper, and then we're gonna start our braid. We've got our three dough logs all rolled out. They're a little longer than 16 inches, but I think that's because I want a little bit more drama in this Easter bread, because I love a little bit of drama. Uh, but the braid part is super simple, all you do take the three dough logs, pinch them together at the top. So you have sort of one wad at the top and then the three dough logs. <laughs> that literally does remind me of making those friendship bracelets where you would like put yes. the three at the top and tape it off. That's literally the exact same thing as a friendship bracelet if you're taping off the top of your yarn, but you're doing it with dough. And then you're going to one at a time, take one strand, bring it to the middle, take the outside strand. Is that how you braid? Oh Did no, we know? both don't know. No, I know how to braid. <laughs> I know how to braid, okay? Outside to the center. Wait, just... Outside to center, right? Outside to center, like double dutch. So you're bringing the outside to the center, the outside to the center, over and over again till you have a beautiful braid. Should we do a fishtail braid? That's something no, that girls... No, we should in, not That's do something a that girls in my middle braid. school used to talk that's about all the time. No, <laughs> no. See, I knew he was going to try some four strand nonsense <laughs> at some point I just today. remember the girls in my middle school were always like, can I, give me a fishtail braid. See, nobody ever offered to fishtail braid my hair. I'm so, I'm so impressed by us. I'm impressed by you. I'm really giving us a lot of credit. It's truly so easy. This isn't a hard thing to do. That's why this looks so pretty. But I also don't believe that this is your first time braiding. Well, you said it wasn't the first time, but I feel like you be braiding more than you let on. I'm just a fast learner. I'm good with my hands. We've got our pretty strands into this nice tight braid. And the last thing we need to do before putting the eggs into it is shaping it into a wreath or a crown depending on what you're familiar with. Uh, and we just do that by bringing the two ends together and pinching them really tight. Then we'll add our diet eggs and let it rest for another 30 minutes for the second proof. And when you connect those two ends of the strands, you really wanna make sure that you're getting them really connected. I've made mistakes on breads like this where I'm bringing things together and I didn't actually fasten it correctly and it kind of comes apart as it's baking. So make sure you're making the extra effort to check that it looks like a complete rounded circle. This is a little sloppy, but it's gonna get the job done. The As we said, it can be rustic. Right, we did say rustic. That's in it, guys, listen. We did. Anytime you mess something up when you're cooking, just call it rustic and everyone has to believe you. This is rustic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, also, I'm just gonna put an egg right there where the pinch is a little wonky and nobody will be able to see it. It's perfect. So it's fine. Brilliant. Got our egg, it's going into the bread. Remember, these eggs are raw. So you don't want to push too hard when you're pressing them into this bread. You want to give it like a nice little firm push to make sure that it's in there and it doesn't pop out while it's baking. But uh, don't be overzealous, because you will crack the egg and then you'll just have raw egg all over top of your bread, which honestly isn't the worst thing in the world because we do need an egg wash for this, but it'll be a waste of a diet egg. And we don't like wasting eggs. So. That's like half the point of this video. Is to not waste yeah. eggs. <laughs> and then cover it up with some plastic wrap and let it rise for another 30 minutes and then it'll be ready for sprinkles and the oven. So 
I like. I have to think that there's some symbolism behind this. Do you know? I don't know what it is. Of course, you can have a traditional Easter anything without a little bit of symbolism there, and Easter bread's no different. So. We did that three strand braid that we were so excited about, but really the three strands represent the Holy Trinity of the Christian faith, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the eggs that are nestled into the bread represent rebirth, newness, resurrection, all that jazz. Just like with any other Easter egg that you'll find around this time of year, that's what they all mean. Brooke was kind enough to make me a little bit of egg wash. I'm gonna brush it all over the nooks and crannies, get it nice and golden brown in the oven, and then we could probably move on to my favorite part of this entire recipe, which is the sprinkles on top of the bread. I think it's very fun that we get to put sprinkles on bread. Of course we get to put sprinkles on bread, but we're definitely doing that before it goes in the oven, so we can do that now. We don't have to yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. No, no, no. I was, I, it's after you egg wash it, because they'd actually, like you think that they'd like melt or get weird. The non-perel style of uh, sprinkles that are traditional for an Easter bread won't do that. Also, you could probably find like any, you could go like a single color, or you could do pastels, but I kind of love this rainbow look. I feel like most of the versions you see are done with the rainbow. I think the rainbow is the most classic. Also, it might have a little bit of color runnage after we put it onto the egg wash, but that's okay. It's just part of the festivity. Mm -hmm. So lean into it. Don't be afraid of it. Absolutely. Look at our precious baby. Going into a preheated 375 degree oven for how long, Brooke? 30 minutes. Bam. And what are we looking for? A moment too soon. Actually, what I would love to share is a great trick for making sure your bread is done, and that is using a thermometer, which I know is kind of counterintuitive. You're like, girl, I use that for my meat, not my bread. That's weird. It's not that weird. Get a pen thermometer, stick it into the bread, and look for a temperature of about 190 degrees. That way you know your bread is not dry and it's not underbaked. It's gonna be right there in that sweet spot. Learning how to do that kind of changed my life for <laughs> baking breads, like legitimately. No, I, I would not know when my breads are done. And once I understood that you could actually use it just like meat, it really helped me. Just make sure that you're sticking it into the thickest part of the bread, especially on something like this that has like a bunch of different thicknesses in that round. Make sure you're getting to like the middle of the thickest part so you know. So off camera, yeah. Julia just tried some of this and she said that it like felt like a beauty blender and that couldn't be more true, but it's like the best way to describe this. It's so squishy and fluffy and pillowy. It has that amazing sweet yeasty smell. I think I've said this before somewhere, but like my favorite dessert is actually just sweet bread. Like I don't want cake. That's like I dessert. want bread that's <laughs> sweet, which is what this is. This is dessert to me. I'm so glad you think this is dessert. It's not, but that doesn't mean it's not the most delicious bread I've had in a really long time. It is like an edible beauty blender. But my favorite part about it is just honestly tearing it and watching the gluten strands between each half. It's like such a sensory delight to me. Like, look at that. What I love about this is it's not all floof. The floof is a big part of it, but you do have this like really nice crumb on the bottom that forms when it's well baked. And then on top you get those non prels which do add a little bit of flavor, but are mostly just adding that like bite at the end of it, like a snow cap. But there's also a little bit of crust on the top too. So that same crust you get on the bottom from the contact with the pan, you get a crust on the top from the heat of the oven, which is really nice. Also the egg wash, which helped it get nice and golden brown. Honestly, this is past golden brown. This is just straight up beautiful brown. This bread is exactly what we promised it would be. It's festive, it's soft, and it's fluffy, but it's one extra thing. It's a little bit crunchy on top, so it's got a great contrast. I'm envisioning serving this with like the biggest, most beautiful bowl of bright yellow salted butter. Mm. Just that combination of like sweet bread, salty butter, and it's like a perfect pre-dinner bread, like almost like instead of a dinner roll, I want to eat this. Mm -hmm. But also, you'd be crazy if you didn't think that I'm putting a little piece of ham on this, a little piece of potato, some peas, and eating it little. like a little like morsel while I'm eating my Easter meal. I'm putting a big old piece of ham on this. Fair enough. Honestly. <laughs> Obviously, people are gonna dig into this bread when they're eating it at the dinner table, but right. what, we're not gonna eat the eggs, right? I mean, I would, but I know not everybody's like me. So what we're gonna do instead is turn the eggs into egg salad and turn the eggs and bread together into an egg salad sandwich. That's pretty ingenious, I I'd know. say. I'm really smart. The best part of cooking in general is seeing what you can turn the leftovers into. And this Easter bread is no different. We're not wasting anything here. That's why we put the eggs in raw so that they got to bake in the oven instead of baking twice. I'm not gonna lie, they're not perfectly cooked. They're still a little bit over, but they're perfect for something like egg salad. So that's what we're gonna make. Egg salad is almost insanely easy. All you have to do is chop up some eggs, then you add in mayo, mustard, lemon juice, a little bit of chopped celery, and chives. You can actually use whatever herb your heart desires, but I like chives, so we're going with chives today. 
best part about egg salad is that it turns into an egg salad sandwich really easy. So you have a use for both the eggs in the bread and the actual bread itself. You might be thinking, girl, that's weird. I don't want a sandwich with sprinkles on it, but trust me, the sprinkles don't give the bread any sweetness like that, so it'll be fine. Okay, it's snack time. This looks wild. Cheers. I would like never think to do this, honest. That's but why it was my idea. I'm psyched. <laughs> Can I say something wild? Always. I want hot sauce. Ha! I'm gonna say something double wild. I wanna grill the bread first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little fry it up. Honestly though, as much things as we're talking about adding to the sandwich, it's not bad at all. No, but it proves that we like it. It proves we're that we like saying, it. We're just saying like, okay, now that I'm gonna eat this again, what I'm am I gonna do to it? <laughs> now when I make this at home, what am I gonna <laughs> add to it? Mm. The sprinkles don't make it that weird. I honestly think they just add texture and a little bit of color. Because my only complaint for egg salad for my entire life has been that it's a little bit too mushy. Mm hmm And somehow the sprinkles, this sounds so ridiculous, the sprinkles help the egg salad. I'm thoroughly impressed with our work here today. Me too. We've got our beautiful bread and this delicious egg salad. So if you need more impressive recipes just like this for Easter, head on over to delish.com all season long.